Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're going to talk about doing a prepayment on a purchase order using the prepayment functionality inside Dynamics 365. We'll do that when we get right back. So like I said, this week we're going to take a look at using the prepayment functionality. To be honest with you, I had never used this, didn't ever have a case to use this, but recently working with a client, uh, I found a, a use for this that, that I needed to use it for. So basically, this client uh, receives merchandise from overseas, it gets put on a ship and shipped over to the United States. So basically, they take ownership of that inventory as soon as that inventory hits the water. So. We didn't really want to receive the inventory in yet, but we wanted to record it against an account to kind of so that we could later use it to uh, know how much inventory or the value of that inventory that's on the water. Um, so we used this method, took a prepayment, put it against a GL account so we can understand the value of that inventory. So it was a kind of neat process, very simple overall to use. Um, so let's go and take a look at that process now. All right, so there are some accounts payable items that need to be set up here. I'm not going to go over that in this video. I'm going to assume that you've got the accounts payable set up and I'm going to show you what setup we need for the prepayment. It's not very much. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up and set up a procurement category. Um, so I'm going to go into procurement and sourcing and then I'm going to go under procurement categories. And then I've set one up here called prepayment and really I've not added any other details other than just to add it. Um, in, under this uh, procurement category here. So then what this is going to drive is we're going to specify this when we do our prepayment, it's going to drive the posting, okay? So let's take a look at that next. Let's look at the posting profile. So if we go to inventory management and then we go to setup and then uh, posting and then posting again, we're going to click on the purchase order and then prepayment down here. And this is the line I've added, the cat I've, I've specified the category and the item code, and then that's our prepayment uh, category. Now, I, I, I realize that this is the same main account number. You really wouldn't do this in the real world, but I was just trying to illustrate that you can send a certain category to a different main account here. So uh, really this all category will handle everything, but I've just, if this were needed to be a different account, you could specify it, okay? So let's see how we, what the process actually looks like to do this. So let's go into, uh, we'll go to accounts payable, go to all purchase orders, and we're gonna create a new purchase order. So vendor account we use today is 1001, and we'll use site one, warehouse 13. And then the line we'll use, we'll just add an A, triple O one, and we'll make that a quantity of 10, we'll make them $100 a piece, okay? So at this point, we could go ahead and do the um, do the prepayment. It's lit up, I can do it right now. It's gonna make me confirm it so either way. So I'm gonna go ahead and confirm it first, but I just wanna mention you can do the prepayment now if you wanted to. Can do it before or after. All right, so now I've got it confirmed. Let's go into the prepayment here, and I'm just gonna put 100% prepayment. And I can do it either as a fixed amount or a percentage. It's just gonna be easier for me just to do 100%, which makes it 1,000, but I could do a fixed for a, a certain amount or I could do a percentage for a, for a certain percentage. And then down here, I'm gonna so we'll select the procurement category. So I'm gonna select our prepayment category. So okay to that, and then we'll hit save here. Okay, so that's saved a prepayment. If I wanted to remove that prepayment, I could just click on the remove prepayment and allow, allow me to remove it. All right, so let's go ahead and invoice the prepayment. So we'll go to invoice, and then we're gonna use prepayment invoice. And I'm gonna give it a number. And I'm just gonna call this prepayment invoice, and then give it an invoice date of today. And then we'll go ahead and post this one. All right, and that's posted. So let's go take a look at that one. So if we go into back into accounts payable, underneath the purchase orders tab, there's a there's a tab called there's a screen called open prepayments. I'm going to click on that. There's our prepayment. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and pay this. I'm going to go in, go and click new here, and go to the vendor payment journal, and then I'm going to give it a name. Here, I'm just going to choose the vendor pay, 
and go to lines. And then we'll create a payment proposal. And we'll go and say OK to that. And there's going to be several items on here. I'm going to remove most of them except for our prepayments. So our prepayments down here on the bottom line. I'm going to basically remove everything but that one there. So we don't have a bunch of stuff to cloud this up. So we'll remove that. And we'll create the payments for it. All right, and then let's go ahead and generate payments. It's going to be check, bank, and it goes for check 799. Go ahead and say OK to that. And I just don't have a printer set up, so it's going to give me that error there. OK, and then let's go ahead and post this. All right, so now let's go back and look at our prepayment again. So let me exit out of this screen here and exit out of here. And if I do a refresh here, so now it's moved the thousand dollars over into the you know the unposted paid amount. So this hasn't been applied to any any uh, purchase order, right? So let's go ahead and go back into our PO. I'm just going to click on it right there. And at this point, it's it's the normal process, your normal receiving process. So if you register the lines and receive it, if you're doing advanced warehouse, whatever you're doing, just follow your normal where. Uh, procedure for receiving it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it easier. I'm going to go to receive. We'll go to product receipt. And I'm just going to receive the ordered quantity. I'm going to give it a receipt number. All right, so that's received it. And then so let's go to invoice and we'll go ahead and invoice. Now when we hit invoice here, you're going to see a little something different happens. It's going to tell us there's uh, one or more in, uh, pending invoices have been, in, uh, or basically there's some prepayments out there, right? So where we're going to go is if you click on the Vendor Invoice tab, there's an Apply and uh, Prepayment uh, option there. So we're going to select the prepayment we want to apply. We're going to hit Apply Prepayment. And then so basically we have our negative 1,000. It's going to go against our invoice of 1,000. Let me go ahead and do the matching here real quick. Match product receipts. Match that. Say OK. And then we're going to update our match status so we can post this. We'll give this an invoice number. So this is the invoice and the invoice date. And then we'll go ahead and post that. So now what we're doing, we're creating our invoice for the actual purchase order and supplying the prepayment against that. Okay. So if we go back out here, we're going to back out and go back to our prepayment screen. So we're going to close out of this. Oop, went too far. Go ahead and refresh that, and now our prepayment is gone because we've, we've applied against it, applied that against the invoice. So like I said, I had never really used that before. I never had had anybody that has requested that, but it is kind of neat to know that it's there. It's very easy to use, very easy to set up. It's just a procurement category and then a, um, and then a posting profile to tell it where to post the, the amount, and then you follow normal invoicing practices to to get it to invoice, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, give it a thumbs up. So that helps out the distribution of the video. And if you like this type of content, you like this D365 process content, go ahead and subscribe. You'll get uh, notified when I upload a new video. I upload a video in general once or twice a week. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you later, bye.